guys, Chris VA Travels, downtown Richmond, and going to look at the Stuart Lee House. It is Robert Lee's residence just after the Civil War. Moved in April 15th, 1865. So yeah, I came straight here from Appomattox. And yeah, just gonna take a walk, walk around, check this place out. And this is actually a row house. It was once one of five row houses. Uh, this was a residential district at the time. One of the nicest areas in, in Richmond at the time. And architecturally, just a Greek Revival style building. Uh, nothing really stands out, just three bay, three story uh, brick building. You'll see four chimneys, uh, one on each corner. And supposedly there's a little bit of a hip roof on top, but you can't tell some door columns on, on that pediment there. Kind of a neat looking uh, light fixture hanging down. And pretty cool wrought iron fence. Got the little Greek key down there. And yeah, all right, so to give you the history, uh, Norman Stewart, he, he was a tobacco merchant from Skyland, built this place 1844. When he died, it was passed on to his son, John Stewart. And the connection is John Stewart rented the house to Custis Lee. That would be George Washington Custis Lee, Robert e. Lee's oldest son. And he used it throughout the Civil War, kind of as a hangout for he and his Confederate general buddies. It was almost like a bachelor pad from, from what I had read, bachelor hangout. And then when Arlington House, Robert E. Lee's home up there in Northern Virginia was confiscated by the federal government, Robert E. Lee's wife and daughter moved down here, moved in. And then, like I say, after the war, uh, Robert moved in. Uh, he moved in the day, Ab the day after Abraham Lincoln was shot, but the day that Abraham Lincoln actually died. So I think I'm on the ring doorbell right now. And a little kind of entrance right there. Let me, uh, not too much. I don't know if these wings back there were eventually an add-on, but yeah, let me just walk around. Kind of cool little kind of mailbox thing right here. Guy on his horse. That's his letters. And yeah, it'd be great if I could uh, take a walk back there, but. Yeah, so Robert E. Lee, like I say, only lived here for two months. He was exhausted, of course, after the war. He was too busy. He was in Richmond. He was being bothered all the time. And also, you could picture Richmond at the time. It had just been burned, of course. So, yeah, a lot of chaos going on. So he ended up moving out to a place called Derwent out in Powhatan County. Lived there for about three months. And then, of course, moved to Lexington, where he became the president of Washington University, which became Washington and Lee. Okay couple uh, porches back there and like I say it's great they still have this uh, uh, preserved let me see if I can uh... I'm not sure what footage I got there but there's a famous photo of Robert E. Lee on the back door uh, taken by Matthew Brady uh, it's, it's of Robert, his son, and uh, another Confederate gentleman. And uh, yeah, pretty famous photo. I found there I have some photos of the inside I found online I'll put those up Uh, it's kept in pretty good shape. So, crate myrtles, your magnolia. And if you're in the area, there's a few things to see. You can visit the John Marshall House, which is a few blocks over on the other side of Broad Street. There's the Valentine Museum. Of course, there's the Capitol. Actually, there's the John Marshall Hotel. 
kind of cool. Uh, pretty cool architecture on that building. Yeah, just a quick look at Robert e. Lee's first home after the war. As always, like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram. And if you want to help me get out to more of these places, you can uh, support me on Patreon. See ya.